So hello everyone, I'm Shanna, I'm a Canadian medical student and on this channel we are making different videos to share pre-med advice, showcase different medical journeys, and hopefully give some inspiration and encouragement and positivity. And today we have Wendy. I am so thankful for her to take the time out to chat with us and share her journey. She first did uh, pharmacy school and now she got accepted to medical school. So congrats to Wendy and thank you for, for her for being here. So that maybe there might be a perception that um, pharmacy profs might not help you as much. The only part I slightly questioned was my uh, who to choose as my academic reference. And um, so for those who have never applied before, you need three references um, in your application, an academic, professional, and service. So academic is usually someone who has taught you um, like some, some time in your life. Usually, yeah, it has, to, it has to be university. But um, I think like the difficult part, like that was a difficult part because in pharmacy, everybody that's teaching you as a pharmacist and you feel kind of like you're betraying your profession and if you ask a pharmacist to be a reference for med and that was why um i had to think about who i wanted to choose but then i realized it was kind of a no-brainer because you if you if you chose to do directed studies you could use a directed studies bi <laughs> um and that was who i ultimately use um my pi is actually like well he he does teach in the in, in in pharmacy as like a guest lecturer for some mm -hmm. courses but he's not like an actual tenured professor or anything um but because he marked me for direct studies he saw about my work ethic my ability to um like handle stress or like get things done so he counted he gave me a great reference and i think very thankful for him to do that um, the service and the professional reference is sort of easy to get. You don't have to worry too much about that. Professional can be anybody who's like uh, seen you work in a professional area. Um, and in my case, it was also research, but in this case, it was my wet lab um, PI. And my service reference was some was my manager uh, at Savons, who um, yeah I, I worked with already for a while and like he saw how I was with patients. Service is basically like a lot of people use their volunteering supervisor or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just see, seeing how you work with people, how you handle difficult situations, people who can talk about you like that. Mm -hmm. So my manager was a great choice as well. So it sounds like these are quite flexible. So like for example, the service one, it's more, instead of saying community services, people oriented. So it could, yeah. could even be your paid work. It could be your volunteer work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, maybe it could have been academic if your other ones weren't already academic. Picture it probably, you could probably not go wrong. Assuming mm -hmm. that like every extra people you did, you, I don't know, maybe, maybe did you have anyone else that you were like on the, you didn't end up adding, but you considered like asking for reference? Uh, not really, not in the case of a med application. I already had very like uh, for sure people. Um, and I was glad that I had those choices. Some people struggle to find a suitable one. I thought all of my references were pretty suited to what they were going to say um yeah so i was lucky in that aspect but i would say um one important thing i think i learned just from experience is that it's always important to just ask the person that you're like looking for a reference if they can write a great reference for you and not just that they could write a reference letter because like i think this really like you know um deters people who may just be like okay yeah i'll write you a reference letter and they're not completely sure about you like i think it's better to ask around people and like ask them would you be able to write me a great reference letter instead of risking a bland letter from someone you thought that was originally the best fit mm -hmm. and i think like this can save you a lot of time down mm -hmm. the road that is a really i'm in stress that is i think that's that's a big thing for med school applicants you really okay. shouldn't and most applications don't let you see your own reference letter. Some writers may give it to you. They might print mm -hmm. a copy just so you know what they wrote um, for funsies, but I don't think I have any copies, but, uh, but I think that's like less common. So you do have to feel quite confident they're gonna say good things about you. Yes. And I yes. don't think anyone is malicious enough to say bad things about you. Um, uh, unless there's only one like maybe exception is that this is their first time ever writing a reference letter for anybody. Yeah and they mm -hmm. don't understand um, maybe like the fact that they shouldn't write anything bad about you. Um, but most people, especially if they're a professor and um, you know, maybe they, they had a few students that have gone and applied to medical school pharmacies, mm -hmm. 
and things like that, um, they do kind of know the process quite a bit and they kind of know that you're supposed to highlight like strengths and stuff. So, yeah, I think it's important, you know, always to get, try to get someone who would be willing to write a personalized letter for you or as personal as possible. Because like, as you said, if you ask like a professor who has already had many students who ask them for a reference letter, they might have a generic template that they use. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think it's like, if, um, you know them very well, I think it's fine, but like, just make sure that, uh, they'll be able to write things about you. Studies, I think my academic letter must have been weak. I think I, I did ask a professor, but I think um, like that I had a class with, uh, didn't work with, and I, I think it probably could have been stronger. But mm. yeah, I don't, I, for some reason, I'm, I feel like I had five references, but I don't know what oh. it is. Maybe that's because, so maybe, and I, I don't think this is the norm, nor should, do I necessarily think you, people should do it, but maybe that's just what happened. I think UBC wanted a certain type of person, but the other schools I applied to, so I also applied to the Ontario schools and I applied to the Calgary. I think they're, they also, they had a different requirement and they needed something very specific. And the ones that I used for UBC were not the same and they wanted something different. So I think I had to pull something else that was totally different for some reason. <laughs> um, so I would probably look into that. Uh, I think most people are probably gonna be applying to UBC if they're thinking about going to UBC Pharmacy and then UBC Med, but um, mm -hmm. um, just to like be aware of that. I think the more letters you can get, the better. <laughs> but you only, you do have a limit. Usually it's three, I think most yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, three, you only need three. Three people that really like you. Yeah, <laughs> that know you. <laughs> I know you, and that's really hard to achieve. I'm, I know mm -hmm. I'm, I like thinking like maybe that's one thing I'm a bit more antsy about um, going forward with CARMS is like for for example right now because we are in such big classes and stuff I don't know if I can't say confidently that I have anyone that is gonna say like yeah this person's amazing mm -hmm. um, so I'm like hopefully I think it it's definitely not the easiest thing to do so um uh yeah do stuff that you maybe can interact with someone and kind of be a good person. <laughs> And I, I want to say, I don't, I don't know, again, don't take my word for it, but I want to say if two of your letters are pretty good and one of them is like, so-so, like maybe you only could ask a professor that kind of knows you. Um, I think like sometimes you got to play with what you get. Um, and then if you don't get in that cycle, then maybe beat that one up. But yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah I think, I guess to summarize what you said, but basically being in pharmacy, actually you, you initially, I guess is the perception of people on Reddit too, is that, um, that maybe they would not like it, that you're, you know, in pharmacy, you're leaving the profession, but it's mm -hmm. basically from what you're saying is like, no one really cares. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I, I, I think like if you did like, sorry, I should, I should have mentioned this before. Like if you did ask an academic professor, like someone who's taught you in lectures, um, it might be a little bit awkward to bring this situation up. I'm not really sure how they would take it. Um, but like, I was just, I think because my PI was a clinical, um, more of a clinical professor, I guess. Mm -hmm. So he works a lot with um, doctors and all the other healthcare professionals. So he didn't really see a difference between going into pharmacy and med, which I was actually very grateful about. You know, he, he's told me a lot about himself. He says he's actually considered med before when he was young and he's really inspired me in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was very supportive of my decision. <laughs> I was lucky in that way. So, so I guess to, to change what I said is maybe yeah. there might be, um, maybe yeah. it might be awkward. Um, and it's hard for you to say because you didn't end up having to ask to anyone. So maybe yeah. reinvestigate that and maybe we'll probably go by feel, feel. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's probably different to approach a professor that you've only interacted with once or twice and be like, Hey, I want to go to farm med school. Yeah. Um, it, it's probably different that um, you, you, this person knows you, they know your intent and they know you on a personal level and they want to vouch for you. So probably anyone in whatever context, if they know you very personally and they know your passion, they probably will support you. And if, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This is, this is a very good question that someone had asked and I guess I don't know the answer. We don't know. No, I, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, like if you decide you wanted to ask a professor that you've never really even talked to, like in pharmacy that you're going to go into menu, ask them for a reference letter. I don't think that's a good decision at all. Um, if you know the professor personally, like if you've actually done research with them and we do have tons of academic professors that actually do have students in their labs, like, and overall you've talked with them about it before. I don't see why they would, say no i really don't like but don't just you know approach a professor that you don't know very well about it in pharmacy 
Mm -hmm. And I think probably um, what you did is you were respectful about like leaving pharmacy for medical school. I think I don't want to, I don't want to put anyone down and I don't, you know, I don't want to say like this is wrong, but I, I, I do think, and I don't think the people make it that do this is some people are very condescending about pharmacy and treating medicine as superior. Yeah. Um, I guess for context, we got introduced by our mutual bestie, Jamie, which I had some videos with and I was like pointing, I don't know where they're going to go, but <laughs> those ones out. Um, but I think like, I think both of us and I think a professor can tell, I think someone who has respect for like pharmacy itself as a profession. I think there is like, I think like the definition of like when people say like treating as a stepping stone, like, you know, I think in all fairness, in the literal sense, like it was kind of your stepping stone. Right. But I think there's a difference in like the attitude of like, what attitude are you treating it as a stepping stone? Are you treating I it? I agree stepping? with that. Yeah. Because like, for example, you, you, you did have that interest of like pharmacy for the sake of pharmacy in a bit. Um, and like, I think you ultimately always knew you were interested in medicine, but I think there is like a difference between being arrogant about it. And there's a difference between being like, yeah, you know, I tried it out and I still like, you know, you know, medicine still calls for me. I think, I think people can tell that and um, it probably shows. And, you know, I think if someone say, for example, you were working in like say your safe way and you were really like you were constantly being dismissive about the fact that you're in pharmacy and not taking your own responsibility it would have been different so i think yeah. it's all about like work ethic and character in the end i think there's like good karma and like you do good people recognize it people should leave questions for wendy below um but i think mm -hmm. this and i probably will release like a big version and then i'll also chop them too sure. uh, i hope what i talked about today is relatable to some people can help some people and yeah thank you for having me here and to give me the opportunity to talk about it yeah no thank you so much wendy um